Um, today I want to share with you how I create small illustrations that have a multitude of use. You can use them for graphic tees, uh, for creating small art prints, for creating stickers. Personally, I will be transferring my uh, illustrations onto these handmade ornaments that are basically just created with embroidery hoops. I don't know if you can see those in detail. If you guys actually want to check these out in more detail, you can just uh, check the link in the description below and it'll take you over to my Etsy shop. There will be a video next Saturday detailing how to import and digitally edit your uh, illustrations, as well as how I created these ornaments, so how I transferred my small illustration onto the uh, linen for the um, embroidered ornaments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and make sure to enable notifications so that uh, you guys get a reminder when my next video comes out next Saturday with the process for the ornaments. If you have a concept in your mind, but you don't have the technical skill to draw out your idea, a great place to start is sourcing reference images. Reference images are a visual tool to help guide your drawing and create a more robust idea. There's many avenues you could utilize for finding reference images. You could find images through stock image sites, such as Unsplash, Pixabay, Pexels. These sites essentially offer free high resolution images that have been sourced by other or created by other artists and photographers who are willing to share access to their content. I'll add the links below um, in the description in case you wanna check any of those sites out. Some stock photo sites may require purchase or subscription in order to access the image files. Typically, I don't want to invest money into purchasing stock photos if I can avoid unnecessary cost. So you can also filter on some of those other websites by searching specifically for their free selection of stock images. You could download the images onto your device or take screenshots while browsing. Please be mindful, some stock images require attribution, which is where you basically uh, either share the link for the artist who's created the content or uh, whether you provide the artist's information or uh, their information for that specific image file that you're using. Others will clearly state no attribution is required. It's an honest practice to provide credit to the original artist. It will also help you avoid issues with copyright infringement. Another way I source reference images is while browsing social media. So you may stumble upon a post that sparks an idea and you wanna save the post as a point of reference for your creation. So if you take a screenshot or uh, save or share the link with yourself, or you could also uh, save it on a Pinterest board, these are all great ways basically to collect ideas and images for later use. So I definitely do encourage you to depart from copying other creators' designs outright. Again, reference images are meant to be used as a means of reference, not for the intent of outright copying and redistributing as, uh, as your own. So for the sake of the project I'm working on, I already had a rough concept of the animals and the stylation stylization I wanted to execute. It was just a matter of finding the right pose for each animal. So I simply did a Google search for red squirrel sitting or red squirrel eating in order to find images that I felt had a uh, you know balanced composition that would work for my drawing. So to start my project, I'll typically draw out small thumbnail drawings at a much smaller scale than the drawing I intend to uh, create. These drawings are rough sketches that have very little detail and I'll make multiple versions of the drawings in order to play with the placement or the composition of the objects that I intend to draw. So it's a good idea at this stage of your drawing to pay attention to positive and negative space, which is essentially the positive space is what your subject is occupying in your image and the negative space is the space that's not occupied by your subject matter. So the space around what you're drawing and you ideally would want to just balance both spaces. Once I've set it on a layout that works, I jump right to transferring my design onto my media of choice. So that would be your paper, canvas, wood, whatever base you're choosing to put your artwork on. So there's many ways you can transfer your image. Uh, you may have skipped preliminary drawing and jumped right to drawing your image out onto the final base of your choice. That's totally fine. That works. Uh, you may have to scale your drawing up. So if you did my method where you do smaller thumbnail drawings, well, now you have to create maybe a larger drawing to meet the base paper size that you're going to be using. Uh, so you could draw a grid over your reference image or your preliminary, ske preliminary sketches, and then also draw a grid out very lightly, obviously, on your canvas or paper, and then transfer each square of the grid over one by one. Uh, the method I choose is to create what, uh, what's called a construct drawing. So I look basically at the light 
the midtones and the shadows in my reference image, and I try to simplify the details to just basic geometric shapes. So try not to focus on all the little itty details, just the base shape of each of those tones. And it'll typically look something like this. And once I feel that I have transferred the shapes over accurately, nothing looks distorted, then I'll start adding more curves to each shape to add more detail. At this point, I have a pretty good base for starting to add color. Um, I will suggest also at this point, if it's still difficult for you to um, sort of just draw the basic shapes of each of the highlight shadows and midtones, you could also just draw an axis, like a horizontal and a vertical line, and then you could map them out from that horizontal and vertical axis. So I'm using watercolors for the scroll, so I want to start with the lightest tones first, and watercolor usually uh, you would build it up in layers from lightest to darkest. And uh, I typically will try to erase some of the additional pencil lines before I put the base watercolor on because it's difficult, obviously, to lift pencil once you've put pigment on top of it. So it's usually a good idea to pencil your sketch in and then erase some of the additional pencil lines that maybe you don't need and then work on uh, adding the watercolor on top. So I'll usually do a light wash of the base color. Then I'll go in with the same color, just a little less watered down to start adding midtones. Then the shadows I add last. Watercolor paint is quite forgiving, so you can usually use clean water to lift pigment off your paper or your canvas. If you've made an error, or uh, you know, or if all else fails, sometimes I'll even use a little bit of white acrylic paint just to correct an error that's not redeemable. After I have the base, midtone, and shadows in, that's when I go back in and I add highlights with white acrylic paint. So you can block the areas you want to highlight out much earlier on in painting if you use uh, mediums like wax or lake, uh, liquid latex blocking which you basically paint onto the uh, surface of your paper or canvas before you've started adding pigment. And then uh, once you've done your painting, you can actually peel that liquid latex off and it will have blocked out all those highlights or all those white areas, uh, basically where you don't want pigment uh, on the paper. So this method requires some foresight and planning. So uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little more reckless. I don't have the foresight to plan my paintings like that. So I'm quite comfortable going in afterwards and adding my highlights. Just a reminder, my next video on Saturday is gonna be a continuation of this video. You're gonna to get to see the editing process on the computer, as well as how I transferred the illustration to the Christmas ornaments. So please uh, check back next Saturday for that video as well. And uh, for today, I'm signing off. Enjoy the rest of the time-lapse video without my voiceover. Bye.